Good afternoon. I'm glad to be here with you today. We're going to talk about Letitia Tyler and Julia Tyler, two wives of a unique man who occupied the office of the presidency. I'm in fact going to start talking, uh, start our lecture today with just a little bit of discussion about him, but it should be an interesting day. And I have started this video about three times because I find myself getting so far off track. So if you'll forgive me, I'm gonna drive in and see if I can get started again. But last time you, know, you heard from me, I had sent you the written lecture about William Henry Harrison and his very shortened and brief presidency and the sad conditions under which he left this earth. And today what we're going to do is look at his success, his successor's wives, but I want to talk for just a second about John Tyler himself. As the 10th president of the United States, he had the unenviable position of being the first to inherit the presidency through the death of the sitting executive. Now, uh, you and I, Think of it as a truism. Well, if a president passes away, then certainly the vice president's primary uh, function, not to attend funerals, but rather to be there prepared to step up into that office. Well, there is a, there was not that understanding then. Everybody's sort of scratching their head. Okay, well, Tyler's going to kind of man the office until we figure out what to do. And he didn't understand it that way at all. And it's a really good thing that he stood his ground. He refused to accept any, someone's talking to him as addresses him as acting president, or if he received mail that said acting president, he would not accept that. And he refused to open any mail that said acting president. And you and I go, well, big deal, you know, people misspell our names or call us wrong things on the mail. But back in the day, in this day, your, your, title and, and your address and your mail represented a surefire sense of identification as to who you are, much like our social security number or an ID card today. So calling him acting president by him refuting that title through not opening his mail was basically saying, that's not who I am. And he really stood his ground and I'm glad, I'm glad that he did. Uh, Tyler is such an enigmatic figure and a complicated figure. I, this is where I get off when I start um, getting off the, the path here. Donner Justice had just just purchased a book and about John Tyler, and he's been telling me about it. And I really sh wish I had had time to read it before <clears throat> I did this lecture. And if I have time over the rest of the summer, I certainly want to go through that. Um, but he stood by his guns. Uh, I am the president, and that is so important. His great nephew was none other than Harry Truman. And Harry Truman, think, what an irony that is, think had Truman not had confidence in the fullness of his power as the chief executive. When FDR died, think of how that would have limited what he was able to do. Not only if he doubted himself, but if the nation or Congress um, had doubted his the fact that he he had those plenary powers, he had those full powers as president. Think about how things would have gone. So these, um, I, I think that's a really interesting uh, commonality that they share, and things would have been very different for Truman had had Tyler not. Um, stood his ground on that issue. Tyler is, again, an interesting character. He was a state's rights man. He was cut of, as we'll see, the old Jeffersonian cloth that the most important thing were the rights of the states. And the most important right of the state was to enable its inhabitants to own slavery. And uh, we get into a little bit of trouble there he was on the ticket with Harrison because he had gotten into some trouble with um, with Jackson, and which is not hard to do. Um, and he'd become a political opponent of Jackson, even though they were both supporters of slavery. I want to just take this this 
quick timeout from our discussion of the First Ladies or heading towards that discussion for the First Ladies to say this. Jackson had his problems, um, personal and political. I disagree with so many decisions that he made, not the least of which was the destruction of the Bank of the United States. So, and then he's been blamed for a lot of other things. Uh, the treatment of the Cherokee is, is certainly problematic too, heartbreaking the trail of tears. Um, it may have spared them being suffering worse if they've been allowed to stay, but in any case, it's very, very painful, very heartbreaking that human beings would be treated that way. And, and he supported slavery. However, Jackson, like Lincoln, wanted more than anything else is to see the nation endure. And they set aside their other political uh, views or other political items on their political agenda to take a stand that preserved the nation. And I'm thankful to God who has given us this nation and who's given us freedom. And we're still searching for it as our nation moves further away from him. Um, he's given us this nation. We had these two men, Jackson and Lincoln, flawed, yet they had the foresight to want to preserve our nation above all else. And I give them credit for that. And we can't say that for John Tyler. As a matter of fact, when he came to the office after Harrison's death, our old friend, John Quincy Adams, I thought this was so phenomenal that I wrote it down. Uh, John Quincy Adams, just let Tyler have it. Now, you have to remember with John Quincy uh, back in Congress after his presidency, he has, a, he has a rather successful experience at that, and he uh, is above all an abolitionist. So this is, should not take you too far back what he says about Tyler. He says, Tyler is a political sectarian of the slave driving Virginia Jeffersonian school, principled against all improvement with all the interests and passions and vices of slavery rooted in his moral and political constitution with talents not above mediocrity and a spirit incapable of expansion to the dimensions of the station upon which he has been cast by the hand of providence. Wow. So, um, two men, you know, that even Dolly probably couldn't have bridged the gap between, I would say. So, John Tyler is uh, a, a massive plantation owner, and in fact, his plantation was called Sherwood Forest in Virginia, and that is just who he is. His father was on the plantation before him, and that is the cultural system that they understand. Now, Letitia was born, this is his first wife. Letitia was born in 1790 and she passed away in 1842. Yes, just after John Tyler came to the position of the presidency. He married John in 1813. She married John in 1813 and they had seven children who survived into adulthood, which is pretty pretty that's a, that's pretty amazing a couple of years before john tyler uh, won the vice presidential position and came to that office she, Letitia had had a very debilitating stroke and she uh, had lost the power of speech for a while but through work and diligence she gained it back she had partial paralysis and yet, but yet her mind was working and she still managed to, to the best of her ability to run the affairs of the home and the plantation from her bed, um, her bed or her upper room while when he went to Washington. I do want to tell you this and you have to look at this in the historical con context and this is where I get bogged down. Uh, Letitia was considered very strange and very, um, uh, other plantation owners did not like it. Other trend breaking, or, or she, she didn't set a trend, she, she broke the, against the trends. She did not allow the female slaves on their plantation to do the hard manual labor. 
and that was very much frowned upon. She said they shouldn't be doing it, and that was not something that went over very well with their peers in the slave community. So you and I would look and still say, well, any slavery like that is terrible. Uh, there's no excuse for it. And we all know that the climate today um, in dealing with these issues. But I just want to say that about her because it does represent a real departure from the way that things were done. Her daughter has, uh, her daughter was also quoted, one of her daughters was also said um, that I have frequently heard our father say that he rarely failed to consult her judgment in the midst of difficulties and troubles and that she invariably led him to the best conclusion. So we can hope that they had a very happy and content marriage. Um, she, uh, during, she, her hostess duties were done largely by uh, her daughter-in-law, and um, I believe that I believe that Dolly Madison will actually be at some of the White House functions at that time. Uh, so, bless Dolly, she's still at it, and uh, unfortunately, as I say, in 1842, a second stroke will take her life from her. Now, I've heard it said that sometimes a second marriage is the, uh, in such a case, a second marriage is signs that the first one was successful. Um, John Tyler, in, in many respects, is like Jefferson, but in another, he was very different. He wanted to remarry and to remarry as quickly as possible. He meets a woman named Julia Gardner. Now, Julia Gardner came from a very uh, wealthy New York family. She and her sister Margaret were the toast of the town, and they had, I've written in my notes, both affluence and influence. So, um, hopefully, I'm not sure if you're seeing me or if I'm going to have a picture of um, Julia or Letitia put on here, but Julia was considered a beautiful American uh, on a figure and she will actually be want be her her likeness will be used in some um, advertisement in New York which was just unheard of so here's this beautiful socialite girl and she actually becomes her face becomes recognized um, because it is in I think it's like drugstore ads she was just considered uh, just the, the pinnacle of American young American beauty and she was about, I think, about 30 years younger than John Tyler. And they had met, actually, in a White House function when uh, Letitia was still with us. And uh, her father, who is a New York politician, uh, will come to the White House and he brings the girls. And supposedly, Julia said later that you know, I uh, had a lot of attention from President, or then Vice President Tyler, I think. No, excuse me, President Tyler. I had a lot of attention from President Tyler. And in fact, he um, paid me compliments all the night long. And, and so I'm a little troubled by that because Letitia is still alive. And was he a flirt or worse? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And that's what I'm saying. We, you know, we, we don't know. Um, if we don't know how far he went in terms of what was inappropriate. And we've got more to talk about that in just a second. Uh, after, they, uh, after Mrs. Tyler's passing, um, President Tyler will invite uh, Julia to come to, to come to the White House uh, to, to visit with him. And they actually have um, a time where they're in a parlor room by themselves, I think maybe with his sis her sister, and they're playing cards. And Julia said that uh, in the, during this visit, maybe not while they're playing cards, but during this visit, he will plant three kisses on her cheek, and Margaret, her sister, gets only two. So today... We would be appalled by that, but it seems that Julia was rather flattered, as in fact, she was said to have been looking for a, a, um, a husband of 
you know, a high social standing. Well, I guess it couldn't get much higher than President of the United States. But still, she seemed to be playing, I don't know, hard to get. She wouldn't, uh, he was clearly interested in marriage. And um, she and she's playing a little bit hard to get. But fate will throw her, literally, uh, as well as figuratively, into his arms. I want to say that his daughters, Letitia's daughters, did not like this situation at all. There is another American president who will marry very quickly um, when his wife dies in office. And um, it's very painful to, it's very painful to, to teach about that. Um, but we can see where perhaps it made a difference in how our nation was run. So, and that president was Woodrow Wilson. So when his beloved first wife Ellen passes away of Bright's disease and she's buried by the way in Rome Georgia um, when she passes away of chronic kidney disease that she had Bright's disease he remarries very quickly and it's heartbreaking to me um, maybe so um, maybe a little more even than this situation but he's very quick to remarry but let's see how that unfolds In, in Washington, D.C., an event occurred um, on February 28, 1844, on the USS Princeton. This is a newly launched warship, and it has steamed into the Potomac, almost like a parade, where everyone can, have, can watch and, and look at this beautiful new ship, and every, uh, the Navy wanted to show off her luster. And more importantly, her new big cannons, the Oregon and the Peacemaker. And these are huge, um, huge uh, guns, uh, battle guns to be fired from the ship. And again, to protect our beautiful nation um, in case we ever have anything again like we had with the uh, Second American Revolution, um, the War of 1812. So the big gun, the biggest of the two guns, the Peacemaker, had been fired twice to everyone's delight. And it was going to be fired again as they passed Mount Vernon. Uh, Julia's father, the gardeners are there. Everybody else is there. There are literally hundreds of people on the ship. Uh, Senator Gardner, this is Julia's father, had gone on the, the deck to watch the firing of the ship. I mean, the, excuse me, the firing of the gun. I just can't imagine how loud that would be. Tyler was about to go up um, and just right behind him, but he was he stopped he was he stayed down to listen finish listening to his son-in-law sing a sea shanty. There was a huge explosion. The gun itself had exploded. Senator Gardner was killed. Uh, Tyler's Secretary of State, Abel Upshaw, and the Secretary of Navy, Thomas Gilmer, and the President's personal valet, um, uh, African-American slave named Armistead. The captain of the ship, Robert Stockton, and many others were gravely wounded. Uh, there are terrible descriptions about it. It was awful. And once Julia recognizes what has happened and that her father is dead, she is just and she faints dead away and ever the gentleman when they're starting to disembark you know because of who he is he's going to be one of the first to get off the ship as they start to disembark they have to walk across a gangplank julia if you see pictures of her she's a big girl i mean i think she's built a lot bigger um than leticia in terms of she wasn't you know a heavy girl but heavy set but I think she was a big girl if you look at the portraits of her you'll see what I mean um, well she is fainted she has fainted dead away and Tyler carries her across this gangplank and she wakes up and she's scared to death and she is you know wrestling with him because she doesn't know where she is and what's happened and she's so upset well Oh my goodness, you know, it starts to come back to her when what's going on, and she just becomes ever more, you know, uh, just in a fit. 
and he hangs on to her and gets them both to safety. And she she has said in her memoirs that, that she almost killed them both because if they had fallen from the gangplank, they probably wouldn't have survived. So things have changed a lot. But because of this disaster, her heart's turned warm towards Tyler and she is ready to take the plunge with him and become his wife. They are actually going to marry in a secret ceremony in New York. They're going to marry. I'm sorry about that. I lost my camera here for a second. They're going to marry in a secret ceremony in New York. Her family attends. His does not. The girls, as I told you, did not accept this. Uh, she becomes an interesting first lady. She wants very much to be a first lady in the mold of Dolly. And um, she she tries to bring some, in the short time that they have, she, she tries to bring some life um, and unconventionality sorry, um, to the White House with some success. And I think she's very interesting. She, uh, is, she kind of puts herself out there, I think, more than others. Now, don't, don't read that as a criticism. It is not. You know, Dolly is much on the scene publicly, yet she's, she doesn't promote herself. And I think that Julia promotes herself a bit. And please, again, please don't say that as, you know, she's she's um, full of herself. I don't get that impression really at all. I think she just wants um, to bring to uh, the national, to the national newspapers and, and what her husband is, what a good president he is, what their lives are like. They will end up having their seven children of their own. And John Tyler thus has 14 children. I think that's the most of any president um, in terms of those that we know about. Um, so it's amazing. So I encourage you to look a little bit more into Letitia and Julia. Uh, lovely women who, upon whom I believe that Tyler depended greatly, both of them. We were going to see that in President Wilson. He was very emotionally dependent on these wives. And very much, I think, in love with them both. I'm not comfortable, you know. Today, I don't, I don't um, want to get on any strange bandwagons, um, but I'm very uncomfortable with, you know, Tyler and and um, maybe his forwardness. But see, that's just I'm apparently I think I'm applying, you know, some of the. Uh, values of today uh, towards, <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't, but, you know, take a look at them, see what you can find, take a look at Tyler too, uh, and see what you think. We're going to have a very interesting discussion again next time. I don't think you can beat this excitement that we've, that we've had aboard the US Prince, USS Princeton. We can beat the excitement here, but we're going to have a really good discussion next time when we talk about Sarah, Sarah Childress Polk. And I think you will love her also. Well, I hope you've gotten something out of this and learned something that you didn't know before as we learned about the Rose of Long Island and about the gentle and loving Letitia. See what you can find out. And um, I hope you have a good time with this. And I'll look forward to talking with you again soon. Thank you so much.